I do want to say thank you to Tom and John for giving me the opportunity to come out here. Uh, when they sent me the message, I was pleasantly surprised and really excited. And so this was a couple of months ago, um, and I was at Fort Knox uh, for the entire summer doing our training there. Uh, because like they said, uh, I am an ROTC instructor at the University of North Georgia, um, and I've been in the Army for 16 and a half years. Okay, so that is, that is my actual primary job. Uh, it is not woodworking. Uh, but we'll get more into that. So thank you so much uh, to both of you for inviting me to come out here. I really appreciate it. So I'm here to talk to you guys about a topic that I get asked probably more than anything on a one-on-one -on -one basis on the different social media platforms. Okay? It is a topic that I love talking about. Okay? I'm very, very extremely passionate about this specific portion of what I would call my business now. Um, so before we get into that, I want you to, you have to ask yourself a couple of questions, right? Or you have to decide what it is you're looking for. Raise your hand if you're looking to find ways to get more orders, okay? Um, raise your hand if the idea of getting free tools from companies, okay? I mean, everybody should be raising their hand for that. Um, raise your hand if you don't really have a desire to, to get into social media, to be honest, okay? That's fine, all right? So I'm gonna talk about all these different things and show you what opportunities are out there. The bottom line is, is that because of there's so many different social media platforms, I could stand up here and talk about it for days. I'm not involved in all of the social media platforms because it's, for me right now, it's just impossible, right? There's just too many things out there, but the benefits are unreal, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about, you know, who I am, how I got to the point where I'm at now, a little bit about my business and how it's transformed specifically because of social media, how I kind of incorporated social media into building uh, my business and then really just opening it up to any questions that you guys have, right? So with that being said, this is a very questions driven um, discussion. I'm very passionate about talking about this from what I've learned. I'm not an expert. Obviously, there's people out there that have been doing this a lot longer than I have. I've learned a lot, and I love talking about it, right? I have a tendency to start going down rabbit holes, okay? I'm going to try to steer uh, over the general topics, and then you guys can ask uh, specific questions a little bit later on. So my name is Jason Bent. Uh, I own Bent's Woodworking uh, on YouTube. I'm Bent's Woodworking, uh, where I post instructional videos and product overviews, things of that nature. Um, soon, hopefully, maybe if, if I can figure out how to do the live streaming, I'll start doing live streaming on YouTube. Um, and uh, at Ben's Woodworking on Instagram. Okay, so those are the two primary things that I focus on in terms of social media. Instagram and YouTube. YouTube being the primary. And that is a big shift from what I planned on doing a few years back, right? So three and a half years ago, I was down at Fort Benning, uh, where I was a drill sergeant and a platoon sergeant. And then I got an assignment to go to the University of North Georgia to be an ROTC instructor. So my wife looked at me and she said, honey, when we move up to North Georgia, I want you to build me a table. Three and a half years ago, right? And I said, okay, I don't have any tools. And she said, all right, find out what you need and go get the tools and then build me a table. And I said, okay, you know. So I went to YouTube immediately and I typed in how to build a table. And one of the first videos that, that popped up is uh, from a guy named DIY Pete. That's his YouTube channel, and he had, a, he had a 20 minute tutorial on how to build a farmhouse table. And in that tutorial, it said, Here's the tools you need a miter saw, a Craig jig, uh, here's your shopping list for Home Depot, um, for the lumber, for the table, here's the stain you need, here's all that stuff, right? So we went and bought all that stuff, put it in storage. It was time to move. We moved up here. I got my uh, garage, which was my shop at the time, and I said, Well, I need something to put the things on when I'm not using them, so I'm going to build a workbench. And I just built a very simple workbench by going to Pinterest, another uh, excellent uh, opportunity for, for most people and, and businesses. And I found some plans, and I started building a workbench. And I was hooked. That was it for me, right? So I built a workbench, started building the table, loved the table, started building everything I could. I'd scour the internet, uh, finding plans, because I had zero knowledge of woodworking uh, at all. And I just continuously built something new every time. Right, because I wanted to continue to learn. Leveraging and using social media to my advantage to learn those things, okay? And so that's where it kind of started in, in the social media side. So some, some time went by and uh, a friend of my wife's came over and said, hey, would you ever be interested in selling that table? And my wife's like, oh, I'll talk to my husband. So she talked to me 
And I said, yeah, let's do it, and we'll just charge her whatever the cost of the materials for the new table is going to be. And so we did it. We sold that table. Then my wife did what she loves to do, and that is volunteer my time and services for free. <laughs> and said, hey, Malia was the girl's name. Malia is uh, moving into a new house, and she wants, I would like to give her something, right? So she's like, can you build her something? And then she tried to spin it like, well, you said you love building new things because you learned something. I'm like, whatever, just stop, right? And so I did. I found a plan that was like, $40 in, in lumber from Home Depot, and I built her like an entryway table. Turned out really nice. Matched the table. And when I was building that, I started thinking to myself, you know, I would really like to get some new tools uh, because I, I'm starting to learn new techniques. But I don't want to spend all of our money from my bank account. How can I start buying new tools and not upset my wife? And so the answer to that was, I'm going to start selling furniture to people. And so I decided I'm going to make a coffee table. And I made a coffee table. And we went back over to that same girl's house a couple days before I was getting ready to, to, to try to sell it. And I said to her, I said, yeah, I actually just built a coffee table. It looks exactly like the stuff I made you. And she said, don't sell it. I want to buy it. And I said, really? You haven't even seen it. She goes, I don't care. I want to buy it. How much do you want for it? And I told her. And she just cut me a check right there. <laughs> and that was like an eye opener for me. And I'm like, OK, I'm doing this. So. Where do I start, right? I had no idea. Uh, the only social media knowledge that I had at that point was Facebook. Because even though this was just a few years ago, Facebook was still really the primary thing. Instagram was just kind of starting to come in or come out of its shell a little bit and start to get popular. So I went on Instagram. Uh, excuse me, I went on Facebook. And Facebook Marketplace was starting to become real, real popular then. And so I was like, well, what can I do? So I went on Facebook Marketplace and I went to post an item. And all I did is I put, you know, custom woodworking uh, price was a dollar. And then in the description, I said, uh, you know, I'm a local uh, woodworker looking to, uh, if you're looking to have something built for your home, you know, give me a call, send me a message. And I posted, because you can post up to 10 pictures, I posted 10 pictures. Literally, like the only 10 pictures I had of the things that I built for my house, right? It was only stuff that I had built for my house, minus one poker table that I built for a friend. So those were all the pictures I had. So I was lacking a little bit on having enough stuff to really get my name out there. Here's what happened. Next 24 hours, all I got was messages. I got like 75 messages in that first 24 hours. Okay, This is the first time I ever posted. And this is when I really started to get excited because I'm like, wow, that was really fast. How many orders do you think I got out of those 75 messages? One. One. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit, or why, uh, and some of the advantages and disadvantages of different platforms. right? But I got one order. Okay, and so that one order was great. It was building a sliding door console, something that I had built for my house, which is one of the pictures. I started doing the sliding door console, sold it for way less than I wanted to sell it for, but I had to do that because there was so much competition in my area. There's so many local woodworkers, and they'll all do it for cheaper than you, right? But I was early on, and I wanted to make my name known, and I wanted to get more customers. So I took a, a hit, and I built it. Still made a profit, right? Still bought more tools with that money. And then before I finished that project, I got another message. And that other message came from somebody who saw my original post. They ordered something. While I was doing that project, somebody else saw it. They ordered something. And so before I knew it, I was starting to get orders consistently just based off that first post. Not too much to where I couldn't handle it, right? Because again, this is not my primary job. And, and before I go any further, something I do want to make clear, I'm going to talk about a lot of things today and a lot of ideas that could help your business grow if that's what you're looking to do. Um, there are things that I have not, I can't do right now, but they were all a part of my future plan. I can only do so much because it's not my primary job. Everybody understand that? So I had to be very careful. You know, if I'm, if I'm booked three or four months in advance, uh, that's a little bit too far out for me just because it's, it's so, it's never known what, I, what it is I'm going to be doing. Uh, I did that post. Then I got a phone call from somebody and said, hey, I saw from somebody's house that you'd built this table, and I'm really interested in talking to you about having something built. Right? So the orders just started coming in, and business was good. And every single dollar that I was making, I was turning around, I was putting it right back in, uh, into my business itself, my business being my shop, essentially. And so then one day, I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and throw another uh, thing on Facebook. And I threw another thing on Facebook, only this time, I started targeting certain areas, OK? Because the great thing about social media and Facebook and Instagram is that every city has a group, right? There's probably a Sandy Springs yard sales. I could go on Facebook right now. 
Sandy Springs Custom Furniture, and there's people in that group. So I started targeting specific groups, okay? More importantly, I started looking at the demographics from where people were sending me messages from, what the median household income was. This was down the road as I started getting tired of undercharging for uh, projects. I was actually targeting the people I wanted to work with, okay? And all of that was made possible by looking at demographics on social media platforms. And so once I posted the second post, for the next 48 hours, I couldn't do anything at all other than sit behind my phone and answer messages. Well over 200 messages, tons of communication back and forth, and this is where I learned a very important business, uh, a good piece of advice for your business. Always ask the customer what their budget is right off the bat. All right, because what I would do is I would spend all of that time working up these quotes and estimates, and it would just be so far out of their ballpark, right? But this time I got about four or five orders, I want to say. And that kept me busy for a while. And I didn't have to post anything or try to solicit any more stuff because, again, now I was getting phone calls. Then the next thing happened. The next thing that happened was I've started to build multiple things for multiple people. All of those people use social media. So what happens is when you see that group, Suwannee uh, community group or whatever on Facebook, and someone says, hey, I'm looking to have a dining room table made, who would you guys recommend? Now my name started popping up, a link directly to my uh, woodworking Facebook business page. And so now people were referring me. And so all of this, this trickle effect just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it got to a point where really I had to start turning clients away or giving them to other local woodworkers that I knew because I was just, I had too many orders or it was a job that I didn't want, right? So if, if I ask a customer, you know, I, they, they say, I want a dining room table made at this time, and I would say, well, when do you need it by? Okay, the two questions I always ask right off the bat. And what ended up happening, as my name started to spread and more people saw the things that I was making, time was never an issue. They always said it doesn't matter. I've had people say, like, oh, I'll wait a year, which is ridiculous because I'm not, like, an expert woodworker, you know. But it has that kind of impact because they talked to somebody that they knew or they saw something that you built, right? The second thing is, what's your budget? Okay, if they were to say, well, my budget for the dining room table is $1,000, I would immediately tell them, I'm sorry, but I'm not the person to do that for you, right? And I would put them, point them in the direction of somebody else that will do it, which is fine, and then it helps somebody else, right? So all of this made me super excited. My wife looked at me one day and she said, this was about October of 2017. Honey, you should start an Instagram page. And I said, that's great, what is Instagram? And she's like, well, it's a, p a page that you can like share your photos and you know, have people follow you and make friends. And I said, okay, so it's exactly like Facebook. And she was like, well, yeah, but it's different. And I'm like, okay. So she made me an account for Ben's Woodworking. Okay? And so I initially started posting on there thinking, okay, this would be a great tool because now I can take all these pictures of my finished product, I can throw them on there, and I can show them to people when I go sit down and talk to them. I can just scroll through my feed. Oh, like this is a table that I built. Do you like that? Whatever. Okay. And I quickly learned that that's not really the greatest use of that. The thing that I noticed the most about uh, Instagram is Instagram is the community. Okay, and a an ex perfect example is that Tom and John, I met them because of social media, right? John back here, who came all the way from Tucson uh, just for this, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Paul, who I met at the woodworking show yeah. in Atlanta, right? And so this community is really awesome. And I started to notice, like, wow, that person's really talented. I want to follow that person. And then I'm seeing everything that they're doing, and it's helping me learn, which in turn is helping me learn new techniques and challenge myself, therefore giving me more options for my business. And I know that might be a slightly uh, skewed example, but that's really what I look at Instagram for. And Instagram is all about hashtags, right? People, like, I, was, I have no idea what a hashtag is or what the use for it is. I think it's ridiculous. And then I learned how powerful that tool is. And so when I was starting to target certain uh, markets in Facebook, I started to apply that over on Instagram. And when I do pictures of a table, I might do something like hashtag coming woodworker, uh, hashtag coming, any of those things. If anybody's following those hashtags, they get alerted that that was posted, they see it, now they know that there's a woodworker in their area, right? And so. The big picture here is that there's all these different social media platforms available to you. None of them are the same. 
Okay, Instagram is different from Facebook. Facebook and Instagram are different from Pinterest. YouTube is on a whole nother spectrum. And all of them have advantages and disadvantages for your business in some way, shape, or form. It's getting as much as you can out there to be recognized in different communities and different people is what really starts to make the difference for your business, and which will then in turn lead to more orders. And as soon as you start to learn how to leverage that, your business can go to a completely different level. I've seen businesses blow up in a month to where they, they just can't handle the demand anymore because of the power of social media. Because I could, I could post a picture in the newspaper, right? Hey, I'm a, I'm a woodworker and here's some stuff that I built and somebody sitting behind their table on Sunday is gonna see it and then what do they do with the newspaper? They use it to swat a fly or they throw it in the trash. But if I put it on the internet, it's there forever, right? Somebody can always see it, it's always referenceable material. And I can get to a million people extremely, extremely quick. So I started the Instagram page, uh, started targeting. I never really used Instagram for my business itself because my plan kind of changed. So just so you guys have an idea, I started woodworking three and a half years ago. In that time, I have built my shop uh, ex extremely well. And I'm at the point now where I don't, there's really nothing else, no other big purchases that I'm interested in making. That was my goal. However, my goal was to have that by the time I retired. Okay, I plan on doing that by the time I retired because I wanted to do custom furniture in my spare time for the last few years that I'm in the Army. In the last year, I'm gonna start to pull away and focus on other things, mainly social media, because I was getting so interested in it. Because at that same time, on December 30th, 2017, I posted my first YouTube video. And it was awful, right? I took my phone, and you guys can watch it, it's on YouTube. I took my phone, I propped it up against my miter saw, and I talked to the camera, talking a lot about the things that I'm talking to you about uh, right now, and I posted it, and I left it, and then I started to post more videos. And then I started to get obsessed with uh, social media because I like to teach, okay? I love to be in front of people, I love to show different techniques. Now, the most recent video I just did, I did uh, joint, using a jointer to create tapered legs, okay? I am by no means an expert on any woodworking task, um, but I think it's important to share with other people how to do something, do it in an easy, uh, easy manner, in a way that everybody can understand, right? And so I started to leverage my time in the military and the way that I've instructed people to start making these videos. I, I did the tapered legs one time on a dining room table that I'm currently building, and then I made a video about it. And it's been doing fantastic, right? And why is that important? Because there's a lot of people out there trying to learn and grow their business and develop themselves on social media. And if they can see somebody who doesn't have that much experience do it and make it look so effortless, right? And to really see how easy it is, it helps them and it takes that nervousness away to try something new, right? And so that's my big thing. And so Facebook just, or uh, YouTube just completely took over, consumed me. And YouTube has been growing rapidly, rapidly faster than anything else. I am, I, I am at right now in terms of a following where I thought I would be in three and a half years when I retired. So then February of this year rolls around and they do a conference in Atlanta. This is the second year they did it. Next year uh, will be the third year. And the conference is called WorkbenchCon. And the whole purpose of WorkbenchCon is to specifically target people that are looking to in, expand their social media presence, to grow on social media, and to help expand their business using social media. It's like a three-day conference, it's phenomenal. So I went to that last year. That completely changed my plan. I came out of that, started thinking, talking to my wife, and I decided right then that I am no longer going to be building custom furniture for people unless it's the right project. Like if somebody calls me and says, I have a $10,000 budget for a dining room table and I want you to design it, I'm not turning that down, <laughs> right? But it completely changed my, my plan because what I started to see as I grew on social media, it opened up all these other doors in terms of relationships with businesses, uh, companies wanting to send me products to try out, uh, getting products donated, getting discounted products, and so why is all of that important in terms of your business? You may not want to be a YouTube star. I totally get it. 
You don't wanna have a million subscribers on YouTube. That's fine. However, if you start to post on these social media platforms in order to grow your business, your business is not just getting orders. You wanna maximize your profit, right? Everybody familiar with Osborne Woods? You know, make the table legs and the corbels and all that stuff here in Georgia? They have a trade partner discount program. If you have an EIN, you can contact them and get an account and you get all of their legs and all of their products for like 28% off. Okay, another way to maximize. Um, so these are just like some simple, simple things that you can do and you'd be surprised by what companies are willing to do for other woodworkers because social media marketing is so incredibly popular right now because companies are realizing the power of social media marketing and the much, much less or lower cost than it is to print in a magazine, which will only be good for that month, right? So these are all great benefits, and this is how I started to leverage all this stuff together. And my whole business, the focus of my business completely shifted because of social media. And now instead of doing social media, for instance, or uh, instead of doing the woodworking business and building custom furniture, I'm trying to build a brand covering what I do in woodworking. And that's teaching people, and why do I love YouTube so much? Well, because when I first started, I went on YouTube all the time. I still go on YouTube. If I don't know how to do something, I search. I go to Google, I search something, and there's a YouTube video, and I watch it. I learn that technique, I practice that technique, and if I feel like it's something that I can share with someone else that's nervous about doing it, then I do it. And so that's how I'm building my business now. The social media has completely transformed it, right? And so we can start going down the rabbit hole because I'm sure that some people are going to have questions about very specific examples, okay? You've got uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. Uh, God, what else is there? Uh, Twitter. Um, Etsy, another good one. Um, you've got a web page for yourself. That's extremely important, right? That's something that I still don't have to this day. I have it, it just hasn't been published. And one of the reasons for that was is because I was trying to do too many different things and, and I wasn't focused on one certain thing, right? But if you can drive people to a website utilizing one of these other social media platforms, again, I said, if I can get something to this group and this group and that group and that group and this group on five different platforms, I've created a huge group of people that are going to see my content or see what I'm trying to sell them, essentially, if that makes sense. All right, so I'll go ahead and open it up, and then we'll just start going down the rabbit hole of, of what questions you guys might have. Yes? How do you make a profit by doing a demonstration on YouTube? Good question. All right, so uh, going back. All right, so I took a huge pay cut, essentially, uh, by going from custom furniture down to YouTube currently. What I will say, though, is that by the time I retire, I expect to be making far more money uh, through social media alone than I than I did while I was in the Army. And the reason that is is because you get paid through so many different, there's so many different ad revenue opportunities on the internet. I mean, it's endless. I'm doing two of them right now. Okay, I do YouTube and I do affiliate marketing and I do ad revenue. Okay, it's like Google AdSense. What that is, is once you hit certain gates, which it's not hard to hit those gates on YouTube, you can monetize your page. Every time an ad pops up, because everybody knows every single video on YouTube now has ads, you get paid for that, all right? And so that is, that is what my business structure is now. Okay, and then you have things where, let's say I wanna do a video. A matter of fact, I just partnered with a company the other day, uh, and we will be doing a sponsored video on YouTube. That is another way to make revenue. Um, then you have things like, if let's say you have your website, and you're gonna build, maybe you wanna make plans for one of those items over there. Well, you can either make the plans yourself or you can uh, find somebody that actually just generates plans, which there are people that do that, quite a few of them, and then you put those plans for sale on your website. And that's revenue that's gonna constantly come to you every time somebody buys your plans, right? And so all of these things are things that they really focus hard on at WorkbenchCon, and it really started to get me interested in this side. And here's why it's so appealing to me. It's not about the money. I don't, the Army pays all my bills right now. Right? I'm not looking to buy a ton of new tools and get that $5,000 kitchen island job. It's just unnecessary now. So knowing that I could take that step back, guess what I don't have anymore? Stress. I don't have stress. Because this side of the business is more exciting and more enjoyable for me, and now guess what I get to build? Whatever I want, right? And I'm not building the same trestle table for the third time 
and trying to post on Instagram about it because I'm trying to grow a following on Instagram, right? Because that's important because that gets you attention from other companies. Then I'm trying to post on YouTube, and then I'm trying to post on Facebook. Yeah. So I haven't done plans yet. I haven't got into plans. You c it's kind of hard to do that, I would think. I know some people, like, let's say I had plans and you just bought a set. And I, the email automatically gets sent to you, the PDF copy of the plans. You could then take that and distribute it however you want. And there's really no way uh, to stop that. What you can do is, you know, watermark your stuff. And it, if it shows up on somebody else's site and it has your name on it, but no. Yes? So that, that takes a lot of time. So uh, something I want everybody to understand is like all of these things, you know, your business and woodwork, doing your woodworking business is extremely difficult, right? If this is your full-time gig, it's hard. It takes all of your time. You never want to feel like, that's why a lot of people I think stay away from the social media side because they get discouraged by the fact that, okay, now I gotta take the camera and I gotta set it up over here, right? All of those things are a little bit hard at first. Um, but in reality, no one's asking anybody to just go full bore from the beginning, right? So everything gets easier over time, and you start to learn, right? Hey, what shots do I need to do? Like when I first started uh, and I was getting serious about YouTube, I might be working at my bench, and I'm doing, using my domino, and I'm like filming me doing 37 domino holes. And I'm like, why did I do that? Because I'm not going to put it on the video 37 times, and if I do, no one's going to watch it. Right? So you start to learn over time what those things are. With that being said, it also goes along with the quality. So I might be filming with something. I've gone through so many different uh, cameras. I've used my phone. I've used uh, an old DSLR camera. Then I bought a Canon. And then I just bought that. I've gone through audio. Uh, I've done, mul used multiple editing software um, platforms. And it just takes time. The more you use them, it's just like anything else. The first time that you uh, you know, do hand cut dovetails, are they perfect? No, but the more you do it, the better off you get. Some of you guys might, because looking at that stuff, you cut hand cut dovetails right away, no problem. What else? What's your web channel, your YouTube channel? Bents Woodworking. Everything of mine is all under Bents Woodworking. How do you spell that? B-E-N-T-S, Bents Woodworking. Yes? I primarily use Instagram and YouTube mainly because the focus of my business has shifted. Um, if I was still doing custom furniture, my main focus would probably still be Facebook um, just because it, it yields really good results. Um, but they're all different platforms, totally different audiences. Uh, and you have to understand that, right? So don't think that you can post one thing on one platform and get the same response on another platform. Just like when I post on Instagram, it cross posts to Facebook, it flops on Facebook, but it does fantastic on Instagram. And when I do stuff on YouTube, it's a completely separate audience because it's more long form content. As opposed to these social media platforms like Instagram, it's all short form content. Now they're all trying to replicate that and make long form content options. But people are gonna go to YouTube if they wanna watch long stuff, they're gonna sift through their phone while they're at work, when they should be working, uh, <laughs> bored, <laughs> and they're going to continue to go through. Now, let's talk about, since you brought that up, let's talk about some cons uh, that I've learned with Facebook, okay? Facebook, think of a Facebook marketplace as Craigslist. Who here's ever dealt with Craigslist, okay? Nine times out of 10, it's a terrible experience. Same thing applies to Facebook, and here's what I'll caution you. Think about it like this. If you're a fine furniture maker and you want to earn two to $3,000 uh, for a dining room table, Facebook is gonna be a little bit harder to do that in the most cases. Because if you post something for 50 cents, if you post a, a iPod for 50 cents on Facebook Marketplace, I assure you, you're going to get a message that says, will you take 25, right? <laughs> People are not going on Facebook Marketplace to spend money on fine furniture. Now, there are exceptions and you will find people. And here's another reason why social media can be so beneficial, right? You never know who is using the social media and you never know who that person is. I have some incredible opportunities lined up right now, and it's all because of 
the people that were following me, and I had no idea, right? No idea the entire time. And you could post an ad, and that day the vice president of the Atlanta Falcons football organization is just so happens to be looking for a table, much like the one you just posted about. And he might say, oh, this person, that table's beautiful. I might call them. You never know, right? Should you, were you to not do that on social media, the only way you're ever going to get a uh, thing like that is by if somebody you know knows that individual and they're like, hey, my friend does custom furniture, right? But this goes back to you want to get your hand in as many pots as you can because somebody somewhere that you may not expect might be the one looking at your stuff. And so that's kind of the risk you have to take. You just have to filter through those. Like I said, if, I'm, if I get 100 messages and I get one order out of it, that's frustrating, right? Super frustrating. Half the time, they don't even write back. Well, what are the, you know, I used to go through the whole sh uh, shabil. Like, hey, what do you want it made out of? What color do you want it? What style do you want? Send me some pictures from Pinterest. You know, give me some ideas, whatever it is. And it would be like a two or three day conversation just for them to write back and go, oh no, that's way more than I thought. That's like three times more than I thought it was going to be. And here I am like undercutting the price because I knew that was going to happen. But then every once in a while you'll get that customer, you're like, well, like, they keep saying no. And so you give that price and they're like, oh really? Yeah, sure. I'll take four. You know, and that, that's also really frustrating. So you have to work through that. And then that's where all of these things are helping you learn along the way, which is giving you more business insight for your small business. And that's where I learned I'm not going to wait until the end to find out that they don't have the money to do this. What is your budget? What is your budget right off the bat? And at first I was very nervous about that because I thought about, okay, so someone's, I'm writing somebody a message on Facebook. Think about if you were to go to, you were going to go to a car dealership and you had to get your car fixed. And the person at the counter said, well, what's your budget for this repair? You know what I mean? You'd immediately be like, well, if I tell you $600, my bill is going to be $600. And believe it or not, I have never once had a customer scoff at me for asking that question. No, not once. And then I was kicking myself for waiting so long. But it saved me so much time. It saved me so much time in the long run. And then that's where I was able to start identifying, hey, what are the better groups of people that I need to be targeting? How can I approach this? And all, again, all of that led to these conversations that I was having because all of these new people were finding my business via social media. Where do you see the demographics? So if you, it, it depends on the platform. So like I can go on Instagram and go to, um, if I go into my page and then go to insights, you can look at demographics. So like Instagram is a completely different platform. My main audience is 90, like 93% or maybe 88 now, uh, male primarily, and from the ages of 25 to 34, right? You can do the same thing on Facebook when you go into your profile and start looking. Uh, it's just in a different location, but it'll have the insights. Every social media platform will offer insights. YouTube, Pinterest, everything. And so you can start to target that. The great thing about Facebook, though, is that you can target ads specifically. You can run an ad on Facebook for your business, right? So I can go on Facebook Marketplace and post right now for free. Costs you nothing. Zero dollars in marketing money. You just put it up there and it runs for however many days and you can cross post that to 10 other pages directly, right? So if I wanna do coming yard sales, Gainesville yard sales, Zalonega yard sales, Alpharetta yard sales, or you can just target those ones that you really wanna be in. But then if you go in and like actually pay for an advertisement, which will then be posted on, depending how much you pay, it gives you more reach. You can actually target, I wanna target females from the age of 29 to 37 uh, that are browsing for furniture. Like you can target specific stuff and then Facebook or these, organiz or these platforms will then feed that information to those people. It never hits the amount of people they say, right? Yeah, it'll say. Well, it's it's very it's very like open to interpretation, I guess, because it'll say it could reach up to or a thousand to twenty seven thousand. You're like, oh, cool, right? So I'm gonna do twenty seven thousand, and it never reaches that much. Like AT and T with my internet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to go to Xfinity. <laughs> I swapped a long time ago. Yes. So Jackson. 
social media to better serve our community at large and better serve our members when most of us are old farts and we don't do a lot of, of uh, social media stuff. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here's the great thing, right? So whether you're old or you're young, the bottom line is that social media is not going anywhere. Social media marketing is not going anywhere. Everything is done via technology now, everything. You'd be surprised at the relationships that you'll make from social media. That my favorite thing about Instagram is the people that I've met and the people that I get to talk to and help, right? And Instagram is a perfect platform for that. The Woodworkers Guild is a group of everybody that comes in and shares their knowledge and wants to learn. Now you have one hub where none of you are together and you can share that information with each other. Right? Hey, I can send this post. I can send a DM to, are you going to be managing the guild page? So they can send a DM to him. Hey, here's a picture. Uh, or send me your email. I'm going to send you a video clip. He posts it, puts your name on it, right, at John Jones. And then people know where your page is, where you have your own stuff, and it might help your business because somebody didn't know that you were in the area, right? And then you guys are all learning from that technique. And it's a constant thing. So it's like having a meeting for the entire month whenever you want it and wherever you want it, right? If you see an you might see an interesting video. You might see an interesting technique. And then you go, hey, guys, go check this out. I just saw this. I found this video. Really cool. And you're sharing that information with everybody. And that is why Instagram is so beneficial. And you're also going to reach a much larger, audi uh, larger audience in the area. And your Woodworkers Guild is probably going to grow because there's, I had no idea. I've been up here for three and a half years. And until you called me, I had zero idea that the Woodworkers Guild met here. And I come here constantly. And I never knew that you guys met here. And so other people are in that boat. There are a ton of woodworkers in this area. Atlanta is one of the best areas, I believe, for woodworking in general. Because everybody's starting to do it. And why do you think they're all starting to do it? Because of the rise of social media and the access and availability of content constantly. right? And then all of these people are utilizing those platforms to then start their own business. So it will be beneficial on, in every aspect. And you'll see your numbers start to grow. And you guys can even tag certain things, right? So the Woodworkers Guild, if you guys want to improve your organization and make your organization bigger, what can you do? Well, sure, I could start targeting the local market. Atlanta Woodworkers, ATL Woodworking, um, the, uh, Georgia guild, Woodworkers. The guild can actually become a, a center for the community to come to to learn. Absolutely. Where all the instructional Yeah, and that's, and, and that's, people are going to continue to learn new things, and then you're going to end up finding other people that are in your area, right? And then you're going to build relationships. You're going to find out that, hey, maybe I don't have a joiner and planer. This has happened to me multiple times. I don't have a joiner and planer, but I follow you on Instagram, or I watch your YouTube videos. I love them. Do you think it'd be possible for me to come by your shop, and you could show me how to use these tools, because I'm thinking about buying them? Yup. Absolutely. Made a new friend taught somebody how to do something, and they got to come and use a tool they've never used before. And it's all because of that. And then that person is now going to go out and be more beneficial for their company if they start to do those things because they understand how to use that product. And it opens up so many new doors. I mean, I remember the first time I ever used a joiner, I was like, this is going to change my life. Then I got a planer, and I'm like, this is going to change my life. And then a bandsaw, same thing, right? And I started to build those things. I learned how to use all those tools. And that helped my business. Yes? You know, um, uh, you were talking about doing this part time when you started, mm -hmm. right? And, and so after you know, several years, you're, how much time are you putting into this outside of your real job, okay? How much time are you putting into this from start to, to now? <sighs> I mean, face it, we've got a lot of guys in here who don't have a lot of time left. <laughs> <laughs> So now, I wasn't going to go there. Uh, so here's what I'll say. So when I first started, obviously, like the whole focus was woodworking. Every single minute that I had, that's what I wanted to do. I used to be an avid bass fisherman. Like when I, I bought, I got a house right next to Lake Lanier, and I was like, I'm going to fish all the time. And then I found woodworking, and I sold my boat, right? 
And because I just didn't have the time to do that. All my time was dedicated towards woodworking. And at first, I had zero care about the content. I would build something, then I would take a finished uh, shot, I'd put it on Facebook so my friends and family could see it. Then I thought about creating the business, created a business page on Facebook, started doing multiple finished shots from different angles and learning all that, making good lighting, started to get a little bit better at that because I wanted to leverage that for my business. Then I started to get into YouTube and Instagram heavily. And that's where things, it was taking all of my time. And at the time, I didn't have any kids. Uh, we recently had a boy who's nine months old now. And so, that's gonna change your life. yeah, it, it, it definitely changed it um, a, a little bit. So I have, I have a great wife. So she, uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll be great. But luckily, when he gets older, I'll be out of the army and I'll have more time to focus with him. And another reason why I transitioned to the social media side, because it's my schedule, right? So going back to that question, I was dedicating all my time. A typical day for me is I would you know, wake up at 5.30, go to work, do PT, work all day, come home, go in the shop until about five or six o'clock if I was home before then, go inside, cook dinner, eat dinner with my wife, go back out to the shop till 10, 11 o'clock at night. And then I wake up the next day and do it. And why did I have to do that? Well, I had to do that because I was trying to do Instagram again I don't want it to sound like I'm trying to push all of you guys to go into content creation and throw your business to the side. This is just how my business transformed because of the power of social media. So I was getting stressed because if I'm doing, the, again, like I said earlier, if I'm doing the same table for the third time, I don't necessarily want to post about that again because it's not good content that anybody's learning from. So when I finally said, I've built my shop, I, I, I don't need anything anymore. I've built my shop. I don't need all that money. I'm going to focus on this. And so now I, it's, it's the totally my schedule. You know, I get home. If I go out there, as long as I have stuff that I want to post on Instagram, because again, I'm trying to grow on that platform, and as long as I get my every you know, bi-weekly video done or I can go edit for an hour, it's fine. It took a lot of that stress off. So you have to be able to balance you know, what you want to do. If you're just doing something like posting, you, leveraging Facebook to help get your name out there and grow your business and solicit more uh, orders, that's not gonna take you very long at all. I mean, you could literally do that right at the evening when you're sitting on your couch watching television. Hey, I'm gonna make this order. You know, somebody, somebody writes me stuff. The biggest problem that I've had is that I always have the urge, like I feel like I have to write somebody back immediately. Right, and that was very easy in the beginning. It's not easy anymore. It is not easy anymore. Because I might get 30 messages on Instagram, I might get 40 comments on YouTube, and I might get DMs on Facebook. And imagine if I was sitting there, you know, doing this every two seconds, and like, put my phone down, start, nope, got another message. You have to start learning where you can, where you can give a little bit. Yeah, but how do you work, how do you work all day long and do social media? I mean, I, 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 I'll go to bed at midnight, I just got off Facebook. So, <laughs> So, and my fiance is like, oh, so are you gonna ever put your phone down? <laughs> yeah, uh, it was hard. Um, my wife and I just make rules, you know, like no, no phone at the table and all that, uh, which usually works out until she picks hers up, and then I'm like, well, I guess I'm sure fine. <laughs> I don't want to be a jerk and say anything because then I can't check. You know, one side of the business suffers if you, if you pull away from social media and you work out with your hands in the shop. It could, but it depends on. It can. So everything works on an algorithm, right? And I'm glad you brought that point up because I've experienced that. So Instagram, believe it or not, Instagram to me is actually more difficult than YouTube. Uh, and a lot of people are like, that is insane. Well, on YouTube, I do a video. I have to film a video within two weeks, edit it, proof it. And if I have an, I have an audio guy that I've been using recently, you know, I might send it to him to adjust the audio or whatever that is. I just have to make sure I meet those gates. Post it, and then I answer comments as needed. Right? The YouTube algorithm is going to determine whether or not it does well based off how well I prepared for it. Instagram, if you're looking to grow a huge audience in an effort to get attention from companies to possibly get you know, free materials or some sort of working contract where you're getting paid to do that, you really have to be aggressive on Instagram, and it is much harder. The way that I do it is I am primarily video. Right? It's a video world. Okay, pictures are, are done. Um, on that platform. If I am posting on Instagram, I, I film everything in my shop. 
everything in my shop I film. And it's all content for Instagram. And here's how my mind works, okay? So I'm gonna build a dining room table, right? First thing I'm thinking, I'm gonna set the camera up here, I'm gonna go get the wood out of my car, I'm gonna bring it in, I'm gonna put it on my assembly table, I'm gonna film that. Okay, then I'm gonna move the camera. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check all the boards, I'm gonna find out what, where the knots are, I'm gonna mark out my lines to get my rough cuts, I'm gonna take it over to the miter saw, I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna move the camera, I'm gonna get a couple shots of me cutting it, I'm gonna go back to work. Now I'm gonna put it all back over here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it to the joiner so I can join a face. Right, I'm gonna put my camera right here. I'm gonna do two passes with the camera and I'm gonna join the board. Then I'm gonna do everything else. Then I'm gonna go to the planer and I'm gonna make sure it's the same thickness all the way through. Then I'm gonna take it back to the joiner, get a nice clean edge. Then I'm gonna take it to the table saw and I'm gonna make my cut. And I'm filming every single one of these things like for 30 seconds. Okay, it doesn't take any additional time, hardly at all. I'm just camera up, move it right here. That's good, lighting's good. Okay, now I'm gonna keep going. And then what I do at the end of the day is I take all of that footage, I put it on my phone, and then when I wake up in the morning, while I'm sitting on the toilet, getting ready to go to work, having my coffee, I start editing videos on my phone. Everything that you, it, has anybody seen my Instagram page? Yes. That's in here, a few people. So everything that you see on there is on iMovie on my iPhone. <clears throat> everything that I do. And it's usually done when I'm just sitting around not doing anything. And so now I have all these different video clips. And so I, like right now, I've been building this walnut dining room table and I, I could post and not do it. I could go on vacation today and post twice a day for the next week and a half. And I just have that footage because I keep stockpiling it. And so that's how I do it. Before, when I was first learning how to do it, it is hard. And I would notice a growth decrease because some days I could only post once. Some days I didn't post at all. The platform favors those things. Now again, we're talking about a different thing. We're talking about growth on social media, right? If you're trying to grow for certain reasons. It's still not hard for you to you know, post a picture, hey, this is the new thing, hashtag whatever local areas I want to target. Because again, you only need one or two people to see that, right? So you have to determine, like, do you want to grow, do you want to grow on social media or do you want to use social media just to you know, get more orders, grow your business? So you have to decide which one is more important. For me, it was I want to build custom furniture. Social media is on the back burner. Then I got obsessed with the social media thing because I saw its power. And now I am all in on social media. And I could care less, really, about custom furniture. Yes? Yeah, I think the way to think of it is there's a continuum. On one end, you have this content creator. Yep. So the product is the content, mm -hmm. not the table. Absolutely. The other end, you have Chris Bexford, who's on Instagram, but he's, he's not filming himself carrying wood in the right. shop. He just posts pictures of uh, you know, uh, the table. Product. Absolutely. So, and then it's everywhere in between and figuring out how much you want to. I just had a very similar discussion with uh, my friend Josh, who, who runs Josh Hes Hescott Design Company uh, up in Michigan. And I started asking him questions. We were having a very similar thing because he wants to grow on social media, but he runs a furniture business where he f mainly focuses on modern furniture. And so I started asking him questions like, do you use Instagram as your business or do you want to grow to? get attention from other people. And he's like, no, I absolutely use it for my business. So I'm like, well, then your focus should be different, right? The, the hashtags you use, the people you target, the types of posts that you do should be different, right? Here's why Instagram or social media is also another benefit for your customers, believe it or not. Raise your hand if you think that your customers would not enjoy watching the process of, your, uh, of that, their furniture piece being built. They all want to. They love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's why you just got to be upfront about your, uh, your timing, right? So I always told people like three weeks, like it doesn't matter what the project is, like three weeks from the time I start building it. I can see how that would become a problem. Uh, I never experienced that myself. Um, but yeah, I guess you could get in trouble. The worst thing, right, <laughs> the, the worst thing about that is when you do something and the person then sees it and contacts you and says, that's not the color we talked about. When it is, but it's on camera, and it looks different. And it, yeah, but it's, it's fantastic. The response that I've gotten from that is awesome. And sometimes that has been the deal breaker on whether or not somebody decided to buy. You know, they're like, well, I don't know. We'll think, I just want to let you know, you know, while I'm building this, you're going to get to see the whole process along the way. It's really cool. Do you have an Instagram? And they're like, oh, yeah, I do. I'm like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm at Ben's Woodworking. Go ahead and follow me there, and you'll get to see what I'm doing the whole time. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's helped. Yes? 
100%. 100% that is what I'm focused on. I mean, that is what I've transitioned to. I, I am trying to build a business based around content creation um, and teaching. That, that is the whole focus, right? I want to teach people things. My experiences, uh, tools that I like. I mean, if you go to my YouTube channel and watch, you're gonna see, right? So I'll do, the way I have it split up, and I, I, I messed around with this for a while, and what I wanted to do, you know, one video is gonna be, hey, here's eight tools that I wish I would've bought sooner, right? And I'm gonna show those tools. The next video is gonna be some sort of tips and tricks. Okay, so I did you know, eight tools everybody should own, uh, or everybody I wish I would have bought sooner, or whatever the, the title is, and then how to cut joiners, or how to cut tapers on a joiner. Right, and the next video is gonna be an overview of that product. And then the video after that is gonna be some other technique, right? I might try to cut um, uh, butterfly inlays. I might try to do inlays for the first time and actually film it, and just see how it turns out, right? And that's beneficial. And my audience likes those kind of things. Okay, but it's sharing that knowledge. And that is why the content creation, 100%. I love building furniture, but you know what I love even more than building furniture? Well, I love money. I made way more money building furniture for people. Please, yeah, make no mistake about that. I took a huge cut um, for now. Okay, this is the long game. My favorite thing that I do now is I love building furniture for people, but I surely love building furniture for me and what I want to build. I promise it is way more fun building something that I, like, I didn't need a new dining room table, and I surely didn't need a walnut one, but I have one now, <laughs> right? And I got to try a bunch of different techniques that I've never done before, and I learned a bunch, and now I want to share that information with other people. What's the best way to increase your followers? Ooh. On what platform? Instagram? Uh, no, I, I, hashtags uh, in terms of searchability in if you're trying to grow a following and it's not so much your, your business. If, if somebody's following like Sandy Springs Woodworker, it's because they wanna know what that person's doing very specifically, right? So hashtags are great. You wanna make sure that you're putting your hashtags in uh, to get that attention. They just don't hold as much weight uh, as they used to because there's so many people doing it now, right? in terms of being noticed for like you're posting a video of like you cutting some stuff on a table saw, right? What you have to do is video. You gotta post video. Video clips are what are gonna make you grow. You gotta post twice a day. You gotta post at good times of the day. I po this is my, my thing every single day. I post at seven to eight o'clock on Instagram and nine out of 10 posts are a video. Eight or, uh, seven or eight o'clock, and I post at seven, six to eight o'clock in the evening. Why do you think I do that? Breakfast and dinner. Breakfast and dinner. It's an intermediate time before work all across the country. What does everybody do first thing in the morning? Pick up their phones. Pick up their phones. What do they do in the evenings while they're waiting to go to bed? Pick up their phones. Everything I post at night usually gets filtered in and seen first thing in the morning. And if you, I go back and look at my analytics, again, why they're so important is analytics will tell me that my I gain the most followers from 8 o'clock in the morning until noon. Yeah? When posting on Instagram, how do you determine to post on stories that are only there for 24 hours versus posting on your actual page? So Instagram stories opposed to the actual Instagram page itself, right? Think about it like this. If, if you guys start to build a following, whether it's uh, people that order furniture from you or whatever it is, I take Instagram itself right now for me as maybe highlighting tool companies that I'm doing, uh, that I'm using, um, showing some sort of technique, some short, uh, sort of process. Because my posts, if you look at my page, I'm trying to tell a story on a certain thing. Right? If you were to go to my, my Instagram page right now and scroll through, 90% of my last 25 posts are on the Walnut Dining Room table. You can go all the way back to the beginning and see the entire thing being built, right? That's for everybody. Stories are only for the people that follow you the closest. It's to let people see a different side of you, right? That's where you start bringing in your personal side. What you don't want, if, you're, if you are running a business page, you do not want to clutter your business page with your personal stuff. People that are wanting to go to Bent's Woodworking don't need to see 14 pictures of my dog, my son, uh, me fishing, all of that. They want to see woodworking stuff, right? It's okay to do it occasionally, but if you're trying to build a business, people are interested in that business. 
I use the stories as a way to kind of break out of that shell and be more personal with people. It's not going to reach as many people, but that's fine. I'm not doing that for everybody in the world to see. I'm doing it because I know every single time because I can look and you watch my stories. Are you doing any blogging? I am not. I am not, but I want to. But again, it's just trying to balance all of the different aspects. Yes? How much money can you make on ads on YouTube? Oh, a lot. A whole lot. I mean, I'll tell you what I make right now. Um, I, have, I just hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, and to give you guys some context, last summer, this time last year, I was at 500. So the growth has been much faster than I thought. I usually make anywhere from about $700 to $900 a month just from ad revenue at my following. Okay, Obviously, that's based off how many views you get, how many ads actually run. Uh, but I want you to put that into perspective. Okay, So if, if I'm making that much with 50,000 uh, subscribers, Think of what somebody that has a million subscribers is making. Views, not subscribers. You could have a million subscribers, right. but you know, they're only watching a thousand views. Yeah, now there are, there are the, the, you might have you know, pages that have a ton of subscribers, but they're not getting a lot of views, but it's all relative, right? So Jay Bates, does, everybody know who Jay, does anybody know who Jay Bates is? Yes. So he is a very good friend of mine. He has 500 and something thousand uh, followers or subscribers on YouTube. He gets a ton of views, right? Now, he may not get 575,000 views on every video, but just think you have that one video that gets 2 million views in like a month. So goes I'm viral. To you because when he went to your shop that time. Nice. So. I've actually got a lot of messages from people. Yeah, so he came down and did a shop tour uh, video. Funny story, the day that he released it, I changed my shop. <laughs> so not all of it, just some of it. Um, but the money is there. I mean, it is possible. It is totally 100%. That's one thing. That's not, ad, that's not affiliate marketing. That's not other, avenue, uh, other things as well. That was what I was going to ask you. What, uh, that was just through AdSense? That's 700? Yeah. What about the other? So affiliate marketing varies a lot. Um, I've had as low as $500 in a month and as much as $1,700 in a month. Is that you're talking about like uh, Amazon store? Kind of thing? Amazon affiliate. Yep. Another way to make money. Right? So any, anybody can qualify. Uh, well, not, I don't want to say anybody. I think they have very low standards in terms of like a following number. Um, but you can get an Amazon affiliate or you have Amazon influencers. Okay? That can be beneficial to you as well. Right? So if you have an Amazon affiliate account, affiliate allows you the ability to generate links that are tied to your account. For instance, if I do a video, um, you know, top 10 tools in my shop. And I talk about each one of those, show you what each one do, and I'll say, you know, in my description, I'm going to leave uh, affiliate links should you want to find out more information and or purchase the items for yourself. They go click on uh, that affiliate link. They buy something. I get a cut from that. Have you had any videos demonetized? By I have not had, I've not had any videos demonetized. No. I have not yet, but after tonight, uh, they've been trying to get it working uh, for this. I would like to because my plan is, is since I've now gained a little bit more time not stressing about custom furniture for clients, uh, instead of doing videos every two weeks, I would like to do a video, a live, video, and a live. And then what does that do for me? Well, that puts more videos on YouTube, which results in more views, which results in more people seeing it, more people following, subscribing, all of these different things. And then it expands that brand and builds that brand even larger. The subscribers itself, no. For, you're talking about for affiliate marketing? Right. Absolutely not. So everything on Amazon Affiliate, this is just one. There's multiple programs out there. I only use Amazon Affiliate. Um, it depends on what the item is. Say electronics, you might get a 6% cut. Uh, clothes, you might get 10%. Um, lady shoes might be whatever. I mean, it's broken down by category. Here's the thing. Out of all the money that I've earned on Amazon um, Affiliate, through Amazon links using uh, gaining uh, affiliate marketing revenue, 99% or more has nothing to do with my link. How is that possible? Nothing to do with, what? Nothing to do with the link that I posted. Yep. So I, it's actually funny. 
to go through and look at some of the things that people have ordered. It's really strange sometimes. Recently, you moved to, I think you moved to that camera mm -hmm. back there. Is that to increase the quality of your production or what's for the situation? Yeah, so again, because I started to do such a big focus on the content piece itself, right? I'm constantly looking for ways uh, to improve that. If you have a cell phone, every one of you here can make great content with a cell phone. You can take excellent pictures of your product to post on these social media outlets in order to hopefully get more business, right? However, as you start to learn more and more about filming and picture taking, you're basically running everything in manual mode, right? Because I, now I can manipulate that stuff. And that's really what it boils down to. I wanted something that has better quality. The world is changing to 4K, right? Uh, slowly but surely, uh, it will happen and it will be relevant and really needed. Um, right now it's not, but I have a camera now that's capable of that. And you've added an audio system that's quite interesting there, and I imagine you've got an editing system as well that uh, Yes. That yeah, so I use, I use uh, Final Cut Pro because I'm a Mac user, and that's just, you know, I upgraded my computer because the computer needs to be powerful enough to run the software to edit the, the footage, and so all of these things are just things that I've learned uh, over time and to get better. Um, if you were to go back and look, matter of fact, if you go to my YouTube channel and you look at my first video and you look at my newest video, you'll see a drastic, drastic difference uh, between quality and that's just things that I've learned throughout time. And again, that was beneficial to my business because my business now is structured more on content creation. Well, when you were selling furniture, were most of the people making contact with you, what was the demographics of your buyers? Was it predominantly women or men? Predominantly women. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say probably to the tune of 90 plus percent um, usually if it was a man that was requesting something, it was because he was requesting it for his wife and wanted it to be a surprise. Um, it started, what I started to notice is the further, so I live in Cumming, the further south my client base got, the better the return was. That led me to believe that I needed to target those areas, right? So there's nothing wrong with trying to target a higher median income. That's what you should be doing, okay? That's not saying that if you feel like your projects are only worth, if, you, if you're gonna build a dining room table and you think that your skill level uh, and the materials that you're gonna use and the price that you're gonna pay is gonna be, yield a $500 table, I'm not telling you to find a customer in Alpharetta that makes a million dollars a year and charge them $5,000 for the same table. Does that make sense? But you need to be looking for that client who's not gonna scoff at whatever price you give them which tends to happen a lot when you're using certain platforms. Facebook is tough. Facebook drives your price. Face, Facebook is tough, but here's what I'll say. It was very tough for me in the beginning, and it used to frustrate me so much because I knew that they were going to go to this other person who I know what he was going to sell it for, and I just was not willing to do it for that cheap. But what ended up happening is as my name went out there, people were more willing to, even on Facebook, they were more willing to spend that money. When I built uh, furniture pieces for clients in the areas that I wanted to build, they started talking, those clients contacted me, that area then grew, right? But all of that started because of Facebook. What you're all trying to get after is word of mouth. There is nothing, social media is fantastic, right? Word of mouth spreads from that because if I blast out a post and 50,000 uh, people see it, that's the possibility of 50,000 people talking but if, that one, if, if I build you a table and your best friend comes over that you've been friends with for years and says, I love that table, where did you get it? Oh, I got it from this guy, Vince Woodworking. Here, look, are you on Instagram? No, are you on Facebook? You know, they're gonna be on something. This is him, here's his contact information, give him a call. Take a look at some of the other stuff he's built. That means a lot more to that friend because it came from the friend, right? Than just looking at a picture online and then going, when I can look at Vince Woodworking, John's Woodworking, Paul's Woodworking, you know, like I can, I can just keep going down the list and be like, oh, they all look kind of the same. But when I can go there and actually visually see it, and now I'm trusting the, the idea from a friend. So you have to kind of, you have to go through those, those rough spots, right? It will come, I promise you. It will come, right? If you stick at, if you, if you keep at it and you start targeting different demographics. Here, let me give you an example of what I would do if I was a custom furniture builder still, okay? I would go to Instagram right now and I would type in Atlanta Realtors. I'd go to the search, hashtag Atlanta Realtors. Every single picture that's been posted, most recent first, 
for Atlanta Realtors is going to pop up. That first picture, I'm going to click on it. It's going to give me a heading to what company that is, Atlanta Realty Company. Right? I'm going to click on that page. It's going to take me to their page. On there, it's going to have an email address or a website. I'm going to write that down. Then I'm going to go to the back to the original page, click on the second picture. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to find 20 local Atlanta Realtor companies or Realtors. Then I'm going to generate a message stating something like, hey, I'm a local woodworker. Uh, I like to make, I make, I can make small items such as like cutting boards. We'll just use cutting boards. Hey, I, I see that you're a realtor. I'm a local woodworker. I'd really love to support your business. Uh, I have an idea. I like, sometimes I like to make cutting boards for local realtors, and they like to give these gifts to the people once they close on their home. Just a simple thing. Hey, you can even brand it with your, with your logo, and they, you just charge them an upfront cost, and then bam, you have that person. You might send a message to 25 people, which you found on that social media platform, and you might get one or two messages back. That's two clients, which could turn into a gold mine. Right? Something else I would do. I might do Atlanta Interior Decorator. Huge market out there for that. Guess what? You know how many phone calls I've received from people that are people that stage houses, right? Or they're interior decorators. They saw something on one of my pages. This is where a lot of stuff came from Instagram. They saw something on my page and they wanted me to make something for a house that they're going to stage and houses that they're going to stage in the future. They buy it or rent it? They would buy it and they would use it in multiple houses. I haven't gone into Tumblr yet, and I think the biggest reason for Tumblr being so much more heavily female is because it's very, very popular for blogging, um, and that is a market that I would like to get into. Right now, it's again, it's so hard to try to focus on. You know, I just recently did a LinkedIn because I see the possibilities now that I'm trying to build under content creation, the possibilities of a more to, to meet people that are in those executive levels of some companies that I want to work with, right? They're going to be on LinkedIn and I can get attention from them on that technique. Just another platform. Um, Pinterest, heavily female, right? So guess what I do with all my YouTube videos? I have a Ben's Woodworking Pinterest page that I finally started. I post every single video there, and guess what? Now I'm getting views that are driven from Pinterest to YouTube, which they probably never would have seen unless they saw it on Pinterest. And then those people convert into subscribers. Good question, I have a YouTube video about it. Uh, <laughs> It's an older one, though. It's better if I uh, discuss here. So th this is basically what I would do, right? I would ask them. Obviously, I've said it five times because I cannot stress that enough, right? Ask what the budget is right off the bat. Um, I take the cost of the materials, okay? So lumber. Not, I'm not talking about glue, screws, dominoes, anything like that. Take the cost of the materials, and I have an upcharge. Upcharge is a standard business practice no matter where you go. Okay, I didn't start doing that. I'd be like, okay, if it costs $5.32 for this pack of screws at Home Depot, I'm charging the client $5.32, right? You know what I, what I realized? Are they going to Home Depot and buying it? No. Did Home Depot pay $5.32 for it? No. So there's a markup, right? All of that's built into my plan. Okay, so I take the cost of materials. I might do a markup of 15%, I think is what I was doing at the end. Um, then I'm going to take, I'm going to, estimate the hours that it's going to take me to do it, right? And then obviously the sales tax is part of that depending on the county that they live in. And so I might, the way I figured out hours, obviously if you're just starting, it's kind of hard to figure out hours because you don't know. If you're building something you never built before, it's kind of hard to uh, estimate the hours, right? So usually I would err on the, on the lower side. Um, but what I like to do is break things down by grouping, right? So for instance, building a table. First thing I'm going to make is my top, okay? So I'm going to bring in the lumber from the top. Okay, what do I have to do? Uh, how long is it going to take me to mill the lumber? This long. How long is it going to take me to, you know, do the glue up? This long. How long is it going to take me to sand it? This long. Now I'm going to move on to the base. How long is it going to take me to mill the lumber? How long is it going to take me to do this? And I start adding all those hours up, and then whatever those hours come out. And out, as I got better, and I had an idea of how long things would take, because I used to track it. I had a board in my room, and I, like, or in my in my shop, and I'd say. The tabletop glue up took this many hours. And over time, I just started calculating those things, and then it gave me an idea. But by doing the specific tasks, it's easier to relate to every project. Because if I do a tabletop that's this big, it's not going to take me as long as a tabletop that's seven feet long. Right? So, but milling lumber might give me a better idea. Okay, this much lumber is going to mill the time. And so you can kind of adjust those. Uh, and then I would do what's called a shop fee. 
which was 10% of the total materials cost, and the shop fee covered things like glue, biscuits, dominoes, screws, um, the electricity to run the shop, um, any of those smaller incidental type things. And the reason I came up with the 10% is because I used to itemize everything that I did. Like I had a spreadsheet, and it was like, this screw, literally, unit price, 32 cents, because the entire pack was this, and I used to like calculate it all out, or try to. What I ended up finding is 10% was usually pretty close on just about every project uh, that I did based on the amount of materials. So I kind of just went with 10%. And that's how I always uh, priced my stuff. It was never a, uh, how much money do I think I can make from you? Okay, 10 grand, no. You know what I mean? Now, my hourly rate changed uh, over time. Like I wasn't gonna start off charging you know, $50 an hour uh, for my labor because I didn't think I was worth it. Uh, I, I don't think I'm worth $100 an hour, right? Now, if the person said, I want mortise and tenon joinery on this table, which clients almost never do that, right? But sometimes you'll get people that are like, I want uh, dovetailed drawers or whatever. Um, then obviously that's just all worked into your hours. You know that that's going to be a larger task. The price is going to go up based on the detail. Well, not your actual pictures, but say your designs. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, I welcome it. I 100% welcome it. Because here's, here's the bottom line, is everything that I've ever built came from inspiration from somebody else, right? Um, it's, it, I, I feel like unless you're building awesome stuff like that, which I don't do, right, where you have these awesome designs that you just come up with and really, really intricate things, I feel like the majority of furniture, um, unless you're just building some wicked, crazy design that no one's ever seen before, it, it was inspired by something. Even if it's a combination of 15 different jobs that they probably saw on social media, it's inspired by something or a combination of those things. The only thing that I want is if somebody does that, then, and they're very good about this on different social media platforms, Instagram being one of them. If, if they build something where they got inspiration, you know, typically you're gonna say like, hey, I saw this built on this page, right? I talked to a buddy of mine this morning. He built this awesome miter saw station um, which I told, I wrote him, and I'm, like, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to copy you. <laughs> I'm going to do exactly what you did because it's amazing, and I love it. He's like, go ahead, right? The benefit to having something that's just off the wall out there on a social media platform is no one ever seen it. It's probably going to do very well on social media. Anything else? I think we're probably... How about Etsy? Etsy. Yeah, we never talked about Etsy. Who here makes small items? We all do. Okay. Well, like cutting boards, um, boxes, things that would be easily shipped. Okay, if Etsy is an excellent uh, opportunity. If, for me, I love doing cabinet related stuff. That's probably my favorite thing to do. Anything related to building some sort of cabinet. Um, I'm not gonna ship cabinets across the United States. Etsy was never for me. If I was doing, uh, you know, cutting boards, boxes, cigar boxes, coin holders, whatever, anything that's relatively easily shipped, Etsy is an excellent opportunity. What I would caution you is that Etsy is has a lot of people. And a lot of people uh, means that sometimes it's gonna be harder to find your product. However, again, this is one of those instances where if you're doing local business here, what does it hurt you to build a stockpile of things, put them on Etsy, if somebody orders it, you ship it out, right? So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt you at all, okay? If you're building these small things, and they're just starting to collect dust, or you have some free time, and you're like, hey, I got all these scraps, I'm gonna batch out 15 cutting boards, don't know what to do with them, post them on Etsy. Somebody might buy them. And then it's easily shipped. Well, most of your customers local pull the furniture you were building? I would, only, I would only do local. I mean, I'd be willing to drive a couple of hours if it was the right project, but I, I just, I do not have the time, nor do I have the desire to learn anything about uh, freight shipping. <laughs> I think that's all the time that I have with you guys. Uh, I do have uh, stickers for anybody that might want a sticker. Okay, I gotta have stickers. And I got some business cards. Uh, if anybody's interested in one of those, I, I don't have enough for everybody. But any happy faces? Any happy faces? <laughs> just, just mine. A lot of fun. Thank you, sir. Thank you so Thank much. You. Great.